it's time to step up our font game with Typekit. Hey everybody, so in this video, we're gonna be reviewing how to use Typekit inside Font Pro. Now, I have to say, I was quite surprised with Typekit. I typically don't like subscription-based products, right? Especially, I kind of have a chip in my shoulder about Adobe, right? Because um, you know, I don't, don't really use Photoshop very much, and you know, there's so many other alternatives. But um, you know, I was reluctant to ever try Typekit or look at it because, well, it was an Adobe product. So good, better, or different, um, I did. Now, because Typekit is so popular, I decided to you know integrate it into Font Pro, and I gave it a shot. And I have to say, it's really good value, right? Uh, for $50 a year, you can access thousands of fonts. Um, and then, you know, probably with as many page views as you're ever going to need, right? I think it's like a quarter million page views a month or something like that, right? So a lot of page views a month. And you have access to a lot of really top-notch fonts for that price. Now, they do have a free tier, okay? And I think that is like up to like 25,000 hits a month or something like that, right? But look into that, okay? But with that said, Typekit is a great value. And I think if you want to upgrade from, you know, using the standard fonts to a, a great library of fonts, then Typekit is definitely something you should, you should definitely look into. So without further ado, we're going to jump into Typekit, okay? And I'm going to give you a little tour of the interface. Now, just to let you know, I'm not an expert on the interface at all, um, but I'll show you what I know about it. Um, and hopefully it will help you get jump started. And obviously I'll show you how we can then integrate that information into Rapid Weaver. So let's jump in and uh, have a gander. So here we are on typekit.com and I've logged into my account and it's primarily a way of browsing through and finding the fonts that you like, okay? So you'll probably notice this sidebar on the right here. And this is really awesome way to find exactly the fonts that you're gonna want. Now, chances are you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the fonts support web fonts. So you're gonna click web, right? And that will filter everything. Then you could say, I want everything that's you know recommended to be a header, right? So let's filter that. So then, you know, it dynamically filters out all the fonts for the headers. Then you could say, you know, I really want a lightweight, um, you know, header font. So what it does is then it filters everything. It shows you all lightweight fonts. And you can keep going down. You know, you could say, I want a, a sans serif font, okay? Or if you want a serif font or a script font, right? This is a really great way to filter through the fonts to find the ones that you potentially will want um, to use. Now, once you find a font that you like, let's say that I want to use... Um, Adele. Okay. So you can click on Adele. And uh, once you click in the font, you'll see that you have a lot of font weights available, right? So every single font, it'll show you a sample of every single one. So thin 100, thin italic, which is a 100 weight, all the way down to, you know, the 900 weight with the bold version. Okay. The bold style of that typeface. You can also use specimens, um, which kind of shows you what that font looks like from small to large. Um, you can see what it looks like on dark or gray text on white and then on a dark background, right? Because some fonts really look great on a black background and maybe not so great on a white background and vice versa, right? Um, so really play around with this. It gives you a great um, idea of how the font will look when you're using it on the web. Then they have this type tester where you can, you know, click and add your own uh, text that you want, change the size of that text, and then choose the exact uh, weight of the type and the typeface that you want for this font family. Now, if you decide that this is the font that you're going to want, want to use, basically you're going to click on the big green use fonts button. Surprise, right? And primarily for web, we're going to go to the web tab. 
Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to select a kit. Now, if you don't have a kit here, you can create a new one. Okay. And you give this kit a name. And basically this is going to be, um, kind of like the kit that will be loaded on your website. So you're going to have a kit for every single website. So as you see, I've already created a kit called font pro. And if you click on that, what it will do is that it will actually add that font to your kit. So you see now I have Adele inside my kit. Now I'll jump, I'll dive back into this kit thing in a little bit. Um, but let's finish perusing on different ways that we can browse a type kit. So obviously as you're using type kit, you probably notice that there's these hearts. And if you heart a, a font, you are favoriting that font. And then you can always view those favorites inside your favorites tab, which is nice. Now, another great feature is the lists inside Typekit. These lists give you nice ways of alternatives. So as you see here, we have alternatives to Helvetica. So you, if you traditionally use Helvetica inside your web designs, right? These are some fonts that Adobe feels are nice alternatives to Helvetica. Same thing for Georgia. Here's some favorite fonts, right? Which is Proxima Nova, which is one of the most widely used fonts on the web, right? Extremely popular font that you now have access to um, inside Typekit. These lists are a great way to explore new fonts um, from predefined lists that Adobe has created for us. So I had skipped over that kit window. So what we're gonna do now is I wanna go to kits and view my kit, okay? Now you may have multiple kits. I only have one for my Font Pro site, okay? Um, and essentially, when you click on the kit, it will open up inside an external window. And this kit is loading all of the web fonts that I have loaded for fontpro.joeworkman.net, okay? And you see, you can click on each one and you can define exactly which font weights and styles you want to load for a particular font. Now, what you'll notice in Muso Slab is that I have multiple weights and styles selected. The reason is I'm using this particular font for paragraph text, and I want to make sure that I have the bold and italic styles also loaded so that I can actually bold and use italic styles in my content and not have to worry about the browser faux rendering my text. Now there's a couple key settings that we're gonna have to take note of inside my kit. First off, if you click on the use fonts in CSS, you will see the font family name, okay? This is the exact font family name that you have to configure inside the Font Pro stack. Next up is inside the embed code. And if you click on embed code, you'll see that here is my type kit ID. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that we have access to this type kit ID as well. Now, one more thing that you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you take care of inside your type kit settings is inside the type kit settings, if you want to be able to preview your fonts inside Rapid Weaver, make sure that when you set up your domains, okay, you have a uh, local host listed as well, okay? Now, once you go to production, you might wanna turn that off, um, it's up to you. But essentially, um, if you set up your domains, okay? Now you can also do stars for subdomains. So I have star.joeworkman.net, and then I also have local host, okay? This local host option allows me to uh, use Typekit inside Rapid Weaver Preview. So here we are inside Rapid Weaver, and I have my font family stack, and I've added two Typekit font stacks uh, to the font families. Now let's see exactly what I've done here. So here I'm using Muso Sans and Muso Slab for my header and text. So what I've done here is I've added the uh, label, so I know that I'm gonna be using this font for my headers, so I just give that a label of header. Now here in the settings under the family name, this has to be that family name that we saw inside the kit settings, okay? It has to be identical. So you need to make sure you match the case 
any dashes, any everything. It has to be identical to the to what you saw inside the kit for that particular font family. Now next further down, you'll see that we have load type kit. And by default, it'll be uh, set to default loader. And this is where you're gonna put your type kit ID. And what this does is this instructs Font Pro to import that entire type kit into your web page. Then we're gonna set what our default weight was. So here, uh, basically, if I set my default weight to be 300, so I wanted to make sure I use the 300 font weight, okay? Um, now, you don't need to worry about bold and whatnot. Just make sure you set your whatever your default weight for that font will be inside that particular typeface, okay? And then whether or not you're, you want to force italic or normal uh, as the default. 99% of the time, you're probably going to leave this as normal. Okay, then you can set your fallback font. Obviously, you're going to want to set that to be, if it's a sans serif font, you're going to want to set that to be sans serif. And if it's a serif font, you set that to be serif. Now, just a quick rundown, what is serif versus sans serif, right? Serif has those little nice serif accents to every single letter, right? So, you know, in the back of the P's or the D's or, you know, how, you know, the R's have little accents, right? Where as a sans serif, means it doesn't have serifs, okay? So it's more linear in terms of there are no accents to every letter. They're kind of squared or rounded off at the ends of each letter, right? Then of course here, I'm gonna assign this to a vault. There's a lot of ways we can apply this font family to our content, but just for easiness in this video, I'm just gonna apply it to a vault, right? And remember that I can apply that vault to my headers uh, via the font vault settings. Now next, we're gonna look at the type kit that I've set up for the paragraph. So here I've just set the label as text. As you see, I set my family name to be Muso Slab. Okay, and again, that has to match identical to what's in type kit. Now what's different here is if you look inside load type kit, what I set, I set this to be already loaded. Okay, and what that means is I've already loaded this kit via another stack. Right, So we loaded it via this header stack. So I don't need to load that again. So what we do here is we set it to be already loaded. Now, one thing I didn't mention is there's also a rocket loader. Now with the rocket loader, it will cause the page to load the font faster. However, it could also potentially expose the fallback font for a, split, for a split second until the actual Adobe Typekit fonts have been downloaded. So it's up to you whether or not you want to actually use the rocket loader or the default loader. Again, the rocket loader will cause the font to load faster because it's gonna load in the background, but because of that, it will potentially cause a flash of unstyled content on your page. And if we preview our page, you'll see that we have beautiful Typekit fonts loading crisp, gorgeous text on our page. So that does it for Typekit. As you see, Typekit is an amazing service that has a plethora of fonts and a nice UI for us to browse and find the fonts that we would like, okay? And inside Font Pro, it's really simple to import our type kits into Font Pro, right? Now, make sure that you are only loading your kit one time on a page, right? We don't wanna load it more than once, okay? And then the rocket loader is great, but it could potentially cause some flauk, as it's called, or flash of unstyled content um, on our page. So experiment if you, if you notice it. It all depends on where the text lies in your page, right? If you don't have any of that text that's up at the view, right, when the page first loads, it might be fine, okay? But um, it's really up to you. Play around with it and see how things load. And... Um, that's basically it for Typekit. I hope you uh, are enjoying Font Pro and I hope you give Typekit a shot. Again, remember they have free account to give it a shot. Um, I have no affiliation obviously with it, but I do think it is a great value um, if you wanna up your font game, right? And use great fonts like the Muso Sans and Muso Slab and Proxima Nova, right? Some of those are really stellar fonts that I think um, can really make your website shine. So thank you very much, everybody. Take care, and I hope you're enjoying everything. Happy weaving. Bye.